friends welcome to my workplace at ranakhat west bengal india this i has 2.5 diopter of against the roll astigmatism so i'm placing this main incision at 9 o'clock this is a 2.8 mm steel keratom after placing the main incision I'm going to make two side ports in this case. This is a side port at around 12:30. One more side port is being made at around 6:30 o'clock. And now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber. Underneath this air bubble Tripan blue 0.06 percent dye is applied over the anterior capsule. Then the dye is washed out with this 23G Simco cannula. And now 2 percent hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is filled off with this visco. The SPMC is applied over the corneal epithelium. It will improve visibility. And now a uterita forceps is taken to do capsulorexis. The uterita forceps tears off the anterior capsule, raises a capsular tag. Then I hold this capsular tag, remain at a certain distance away from the margin of the dilated pupil, and do an adequate sized rexis of about 5.75 millimeter. This is a hard cataract. Nuclear sclerosis is about grade five. So we should do a rexis of about 5.75 to 6 millimeter. Nucleus management becomes quite easy if we do a large rexis. Hydrodissection is done very gently. Small alicots of BSS is injected at multiple points and then the nucleus is rotated gently. SPMC is again injected to fill up the SE and now is the time to introduce the tip of the FACO needle. This is Oatly Catrix 3 FACO machine from Switzerland. The tip of the FACO needle goes in, bevel down, some superficial cortical lens matter is removed. Then the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up. And now watch submarine chaff. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus just in front of the main incision and goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator, reaches near the opposite equator and then the chopper is used to make a nice crack. Then I rotate 180 degree. In this case I had to do few sculpts to reach to a deeper level and then along the initial crack I could divide the nucleus completely into two heminuclei. This is the larger heminucleus and I'm going to divide it into three fragments attempting to divide but all these fragments are attached at the center. Come to the other heminucleus this is a smaller piece and divide this into two pieces. These two pieces are still attached near the center. I try to lift the 
joining band after three attempts I could break the joining band and dividing subdividing the small fragments into smaller pieces and emulsifying. Ultrasonic energy is 80% in continuous mode. Now I come to the other piece, bigger piece, only three partial cracks are there. So I'm trying to crack it completely and I could do this. And now each fragment is being emulsified with ultrasonic energy and then the fine particles are aspirated. This is the last nuclear piece. And now, at this point, I have decreased the vacuum to 250 millimeter of mercury. Flow rate is 25. Initially, it was 45 flow rate and 450 vacuum. And at this time, it is 250 vacuum and 25 flow rate and the last piece is emulsified. So it is done. Now cortical cleanup is done by bimanual irrigation aspiration. The rest of the video is going to be edited. And then a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens is placed in the capsular bag. At this time I enlarge the main wound to about 3.2 millimeter so that astigmatism gets the existing astigmatism gets neutralized to some extent. The intraocular lens is in the capsular bag And then this is after hydrating corneal stroma to close the side ports. This is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. At this time you can see that this is a temporal incision at 9 o'clock. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will inspire you to correct existing astigmatism by placing the incision, the main incision, on the steep axis.